First there was I am curious yellow, then there was I am curious blue, and now there's straw dogs. When will the controversy ever end? When will the good movies come back? If it seems like only yesterday we were watching My Life as a Dog and Life was good and the movies were good and was uh, hello there, Nate Jackson, Criterion Collector of your guy of all sorts of places and peoples and things and countrysides and dogs made out of straw, which don't even appear in the film. Rape. Number 182. Yeah, number 182. Sam Peckinpah Straw Dogs. Starring Dustin Hoffman and Susan George and some other people. Uh, 1971, I think. I think it's 1971, because obviously I got the stupid, you know, this is it. 1971, uh, 119 minutes, I think, uh, color English, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Jesus Christ. What a, what a joy fest this is. What a joy fest. Although I, I'll, I'll say, I like, I still liked, I think I still like this movie, though, more than, um, than, uh, I'm curious, yellow. Maybe because of the violence. Probably because of the violence. You know, just because it was exciting after a while. Once, once David started getting in it. But anyway, let's let, let me tell you about this film. So this film is about a guy named David, and he has a wife named Amy, and she doesn't wear no bra, so her tits be sticking out. That's how they say it back in the day. Her tits be sticking out, and uh, she is the she is lusted after every man in the village. Um, Basically, every the uh, they the, she ran, he runs away like he's like goes off to this like village he gets has this house in the village this village and um, these men are working on like this like addition that he has or something like that and uh, one of them his name's Charlie he is Amy's ex and then there's another guy uh, I forget the other guys' names. Um, and yeah, they're all they're all really like you know want Amy basically, and but she of course she's married to David. However, their marriage isn't like the greatest. She's a lot. She's a little bit younger. She's a little more looser, I guess. <laughs> looser is not a great word to use. But D David's like he's like a mathematics teacher or something like that, and he's very uptight. Very well, because maybe because he's American and she they're all British. You know, I think Scottish. I think that's where it is. Um. I think it's set in Cornwall. I think that's what they said it was. Um, yeah, so he he goes down to the pub and gets cigarettes, and everybody goes kind of eyes him. Doesn't really, you know, tries to like, you know, doesn't really care much about him. All they want is his wife, basically. At the same time, you know, they're the the church, you know, accepts him, and you know they want him to come out to the festivals and all that. And uh, yeah, so they and so they move in, and you know, David and Amy basically sort of fall out have a little bit of falling out which is they they get along well in the i mean and some of it is because of dustin hoffman and susan george's performances that they said a little bit of it a little bit of the the fun stuff was ad-libbed um but in the end it's like kind of like he she um what happens is they find out that her cat has gone missing amy's cat has gone missing and so they look everywhere for it and they find out that apparently it was hung in the um David finds it in the closet hung by the the lamp string or something like that and he finds it and then Amy finds it and screams bloody murder and she figures out that it's one of the two one of the guys who one of the guys either her ex or his friend and so she ends up you know trying to come over and like trying to you know get catch them in the act or something like that or trying to get them to confess to it and she ends up putting like a glass of milk like a thing of milk under on the table and they don't react to it or something or they like run away or figure it out and so david you know ends up you know i guess he had so he had some pl extra plan but she screwed it up and so they had a bit of a falling out there and then anyway the big scene that most people can't get over is this rape scene uh, charlie comes over and "Quote unquote rapes Amy." Now, "quote unquote," because she says no, like every five, se every ten seconds. But 
between those no's, she seems to like kind of give in to him, give in to his touch and like maybe and and I think and a lot of people just, you know, it's it's controversial because is it actually rape or is it consensual, you know? She, you know, and I guess Peck and Paul, you know, wrote it like that and said, you know, it's there's parts of it where it's going to feel, you know, she wants to show a shock and um at the same time she ends up like you know grabbing for his face and kissing him and holding him close to her um and all that and so it's really kind of it's really ambiguous what isn't ambiguous is what happens afterwards because charlie suddenly sees a gun pointed at his face and it's his friend whose name i can't remember who you know holds the gun to his face and wants him to hold her down while he has his turn and of course then she shows you know total shock and horror and that is actual rape yeah um and so david apparently is never told about it in fact although shortly after he ends up firing them because basically he he no longer feel, feels comfortable having them around their presence you know makes both of them uncomfortable and so he fires them he gives them what they owe and, and all that and so basically they they clear off however Later on, the last half of the movie is basically they go to this church outing that they were invited to, and they um the village idiot whose name I can't remember um he goes off with this really you know this this the daughter uh Janice this girl Janice who uh who's like the daughter of this old like guy or something like that and uh, he they go off and they have a walk and it looks like they're going to have sex, but he ends up like running away at the last minute. And so on their way, David and David and Amy leave early because Amy is too freaked out because she has flashbacks of a rape because the guys who raped her are there. And so David asks, you want to go? And they leave and they hit the idiot. I'm just going to call him the idiot, even though I can't remember his name. They hit him and they take him back to his place. And then they find out, uh, Janice's brother tells his dad that Janice went off with this guy. And so they find out that David and Amy are holding him at his place and they become very, very violent and want to break down the place. And so the major, this guy that helped them in the ma major comes in, tries to reconvene, grabs the gun that Tom, I think, yeah, Janice's father's name is Tom. I think holds the gun and, uh, and accidentally the gun goes off and the major is shot dead and now they all realize that all of them all of them involved yeah they're all involved in a crime because they're all accessories now so now they have to get him now they really want to get the guy out of their house and david is a total pacifist throughout is, is trying to maintain this pacifist attitude throughout the film throughout the scene they break his windows they they shoot they try to break down the door they try to shoot off the lock Amy just wants to give him, give him the guy, and he's like, "No, no, I will not. No, I've got to take a stand." And eventually, they do get in the house, and eventually, it's and he like he eventually kills one of them by um, with this gun, and uh, and it kind of just like it's kind of like a chain of events. It's kind of like once once one act has begun. Like, there's no, like, it's like a cannonball sort of, like, a snowball of events. Um, David eventually, like, like, he catches one of them. I think the guy who actually raped Amy, he catches her, him, like, in the window, and he ties his hands with wire together, and he catches it with, like, between the pane. And uh, he, you know, like, he catches Charlie. Charlie, and, like, just... Like there's a whole lot of scenes where just it's just it's really really crazy and uh, um one of them blow gets her gets shot up at the top of the stairs and uh, Charlie ends up getting his end like by uh by um by getting his head caught in the bear trap and I think Tom gets his by blowing his foot off and I thought this is the Sam Peckinpah that I know. And I only knew Sam Peckinpah's name from that Monty Python sketch, the Sam Peckinpah Salad Days, which starts off all kind and then suddenly gets horrendously bloody. And I was like, okay, so that's when I figured, you know, I think that was like the first time I learned what a director is all about, you know. 
So yeah. So anyway, the 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 end it shows like he says he got them all. Though there's one more guy, and Amy ends up getting the gun after some deliberation, some random deliberation, and blowing and shooting him. And David like just kind of consoles Amy for a second, and gets the guy at the at the roof. I mean, who's who was hiding out in the attic, and he drives him back into town, like with this like smile on his face that he was victorious, and he says. The, the guy says, uh, I don't know my way home. And then David says, that's all right. And I guess, and I guess what was a complete ad lib on Dustin Hoffman's part says, um, I don't either. And it's a really, just a really interesting way to end the movie. So I don't like this movie mostly because of the rape scene. It was pretty hard to watch. I mean, or the rape, rape, rape scene. Uh, it was hard to watch. Um, I think just the violence in general was just hard to watch. I mean, it was it was kind of cool when you know David finally, you know, things started blowing. People started blowing their heads off, or not heads didn't get blown off, but the foot got shot and all that. You know, guns started firing. That was kind of cool. But at the same time, it was just a little too thought provoking for me. I don't know. Criterion is once again. Trying to make a steak. And I don't like it. Why can't you just show us a movie with decent cinematography? Which this has. But, I don't know. It's just kind of dark. It's just, it's just dark. It's just dark as shit. It's not Hearts and Minds dark, because Hearts and Minds is dark. But it's a real life, you know, moment. This is fiction. You know, it's like some guy wrote a story. Peckinpah did it. And, yeah, it's just a mess. So... Is it, is it as bad as Solo? No. Is it as bad as Piglet Heggy Rock? No. Is it as bad as, uh, you know, uh, I'm Curious Yellow and Blue? No. It's much better than I'm Curious Yellow and Blue. But, not by much. So, because of that, I'm going to give it rating, rating, rating. I want to say D plus. D plus, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, D plus. I'm gonna give it a D plus. Dustin Hoffman's great. He's a wonderful actor. I I love Dustin Hoffman, um, and his performance was great. Uh, but and I think that's why I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a D for Dustin. You know, basically. But everything else just it's just just not fun to watch. It's just not a good one. So yeah, am I am I am I in the wrong for doing it? Probably, but hey. Reach their own. I fall into the category that of the people who just really don't uh, care much for this because of the violence and the rape and all that. But Dustin Hoffman's great, so I can't give it an F. It's a it's a D plus. And yeah, all right. So supplements. Supplements are all on the second disc, which I'm gonna go through right now because I don't have the list to check through. So I'm, I've got the PS3 going. So let's find out what we what did what did I watch in the last two hours or something. All right, Straw Dog Supplements. Sam Peckinpah, Man of Iron. It's an hour and a half documentary about Sam Peckinpah and basically just his whole life uh, with interviews. Footage from the motion pictures referenced in this documentary has been removed to avoid copyright infringement. Once again, Criterion is broke. Just going proving to you that Criterion ain't got no money, basically. That's why they get in movies like this. That's why they're losing money in movies like this. Because this one's out of print. Straw Dogs is out of print. Um... And yeah, so I think the last one we had that was out of print was Contempt, but you know, but that was probably because it was Godard. But this one, American film, big directors, Peck and Paw, out of print, you know. And then of course they probably had to, they removed yeah all the scenes from basically the scenes from every movie apart from Straw, Straw Dogs. So basically it's just a bunch of people talking about his movies, and we have no reference point to the scenes they're talking about. Great job, Criterion. Get some money. Uh, on Location, Dustin Hoffman. It's a half-hour mini-documentary that was shown on, I think, British television. It's basically Dustin Hoffman talking about his film. It shows scenes he's filming. He talks about his career up to that point. He talks about working on The Graduate. And I think there's an interview with Susan George in it. And I think a little bit of Peck and Paw, too. Uh, not pretty interesting. Peck and Paw, I mean, Hoffman's a good storyteller. 
Uh, behind the scenes, there's a like a seven minute black and white collage of uh, things with uh, just you know on the scene location TV interviews. Um, there's interviews with uh, there's an interview section uh, interview with Susan George who played Amy and uh, Daniel Melnick who was the producer of Straw Dogs. And they talk about working on it and uh, working with Peck and Paw and the controversy and all that. And uh, there's uh, the trailers, which are really cool, because I love, like the trailers. Uh, one theatrical trailer, three TV trailers, each one shorter than the last. Uh, and then there's some correspondence. Sam Peckinpah took the time to respond to the criticism that uh, certain critics gave him, as well as audience members who wrote wrote to him and um, told him off, basically. And, uh, and he uh, basically responded in his own douchebaggy way i mean he seems like he seems like the american Godard. like he makes films and basically is kind of an old de geezer and apparently according to the that interview the documentary he kind of was like a really just a really angry old man kind of a producer you know and uh not a very likable guy you know so that's yeah so that's basically it this peck and paw is not a likable guy that's all i learned and, uh, yeah, so Straw Dogs, D+, plus, blah, blah, blah. Thank God it's out of print, so Straw Dogs. All right, so that's it from today. Uh, no, I'm not going to look it up. Um, Thursday, Les Dames du Dumas du Dorberg. I'll know what it's called by Thursday. And sometime next week we'll do... By Brackage and Anthology, and that'll probably be it. I'm not sure right now. Um, and then The Adventures of Antoine Daniel are on the way, and uh, that'll be the week after. And then I think that's going to be it. And then week after that, I'm going to take a break, probably. And then after that, and then that, the week weekend after that, the I think it'll be the 17th, May 17th, we'll get to The White Sheik, Bellini. And that Monday we'll do straight, uh, not Stray Dog, that's later, <laughs> Straw Dogs. I'm thinking Straw Dogs, Stray Dog, Kurosawa, um, Throne of Blood. And then some more Italian films, French films, Coup de Gras, uh, Quas de Cord, I forget the word, I forget what they're called. But anyway, they're on their way. And yeah, we'll get done, probably, we'll probably be done first week of June, second week of June. Then the summer, and then... Do a showdown. We'll have ourselves a little showdown, probably. It'll be have some fun. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Don't rape women. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's that's a good enough moral, isn't it? And uh, we will see you on Thursday for that French movie whose name I can't remember. And until then.